Hello again. We are factoring trinomials, but we're doing something different. And by different, I mean that we're going to put a number in front of the x squared. So instead of just x squared subtract 7x plus 3, it's 2x squared subtract 7x plus 3. Instead of n squared plus 14n minus 5, it's 3n squared plus 14n minus 5. And some of you at home might be asking, does that really make a difference? And the answer is yes. Is it going to be difficult? And the answer is initially yes. Is there a really easy way to teach this? I've been teaching for a long time now, and I tried different ways to teach everything to try to see what's the most pleasant and unpleasant. And I suppose there is an easier way to teach this initially, but when you get to more complex math, that way doesn't work because you're sitting there trying to factor everything at the same time, and it's just a total mess. So in terms of the most pleasant way to do it, and it's not very pleasant, this is probably the best way that I can think of off the top of my head. And it doesn't require any charts, which is really nice, uh, because you have something like this, divide by something like this, times something like this, divide by something like this. You have a rational expression, two rational expressions being multiplied with each other. That's just a mess. It's annoying. Nobody really likes doing it. And it, it just kind of blows up in your face. But if you do it this way, it's not as bad. Now here's the advice I'm going to tell you beforehand. Now these are both expressions because they don't have an equal sign. So I don't have to do the zero product property and figure out what the variable is. But the first thing I have to do is write it from, in standard form from highest degree to lowest degree, done. Highest degree to lowest degree, done. And I have to see if there's a GCF. Is there a number or a variable that we can take out? There's nothing that goes into 2, negative 7, and 3. Nothing that goes into x squared, x, and no x, because this one doesn't have an x to factor out. So there's no GCF. Same thing here. 3, 14, and 5, there's no factor in any of them. There's no number that you can divide all of them by. And n squared, n, and no n, good. Okay, at least I don't have to do that right now. But what I have to do is figure this out, and I'm going to do this by a uh, method called grouping. And uh, some people like teaching this and some people don't. Eventually you're going to have to teach it anyways, so you might as well do it through grouping. Now here's what I'm going to do. It's a pretty cool trick. You have to make sure that you take your GCF out though. What you do is you multiply the first term and the last term, but you only take the number from the first term. And you can actually do this with x squared plus bx plus c, but it's just more complicated that way, that's why I don't do it. But you take the 2 times the 3, which is a 6. Let me say that again. You take the 2 times the 3, which is a 6. Now, you've got to ask yourself, I've got to come up with two numbers that multiply to be 6, but add up to be negative 7. So you've got to think of two numbers that multiply to be 6, but add up to be negative 7. And the answer is, negative 6 and negative 1 will work. Now here's what you got to do. Pay attention to this step. 2x squared is just 2x squared. I'm going to rewrite the negative 7x as a grouping type of problem. So what times what equals positive 6 but adds up to be negative 7? Well, that's negative 6 and negative 1. So we're going to split this negative 7x into negative 6x subtract 1x. Now, so, oh, okay, hold on. You are changing everything. No, I'm not. I'm just rewriting it so it's more convenient for me. What's negative 6x plus negative 1x? It's negative 7x. I didn't actually change anything. I'm manipulating the expression, but I didn't change anything. And then I've got plus 3 left over. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor this by something called grouping. And basically what that means is it factors into groups. I'm going to factor this, these two together, this group together, and I'm going to factor this group together right here. And here's how I do it. What is the GCF of 2x squared and 6x? What can I take out of 2x squared and 6x? I can take out a 2 and I can take out an x. Now when I take out a 2 and an x, here's what I have left. 2x squared divided by 2x. 2 divided by 2 is 1. x squared divided by x to the first is x. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. x divided by x is gone. Good job. Not quite. What did I take out? Now somebody's going to say, oh, I know an easier way. Yeah, you do, but if you want to make charts or if you can do this in your head, that's fine. But I like doing this way. I don't actually, I probably wouldn't really use this way if I was trying to figure this out really quickly. But this is good initial thinking. And then when you get better, you can manipulate it the way you want.
Okay. What can you take out of negative 1x and 3? And the answer is, you can take something out. I never want my first term when I factor to be negative. I want it to be positive. So I want to take out this negative 1. I never want my first term when I'm factoring to be negative, so I take it out. I'm going to take out a negative 1 and a negative 1. Now negative 1 divided by negative 1, negative 1x divided by negative 1x is x. 3 divided by negative 1 is negative 3. Put that in parentheses, and you have a negative 1 out in front. That was supposed to happen. You are supposed to have both of these quantities be the same. That's the whole point. This is something called grouping. You're going to factor out a whole group now. Now, this is all one term right here, 2x times quantity x minus 3. And this is another term, negative 1 times x minus 3. So what do both of these terms have in common? What can you divide out from both of these terms? And the answer is, I can divide an x minus 3 out because they both have that in common. So that's what I'm going to take out. What I have left is 2x subtract 1. 2x subtract 1. But anything that I take out, I have to actually put back in. That's the answer. Not pleasant. It's OK, though. Now. When you get better at math, now this happens to be an easy problem, so I want to start with an easy problem. But uh, how would I do this if I was already very experienced in math? Here's how I would do it. I know this is going to factor into two sets of parentheses, this whole triangle. I know that the signs are negative, negative, because the last term is positive and the middle term is negative. I know 2x times x is 2x squared. What times what is 3? There's only 1 and 3 and 3 and 1. And it does make a difference which one you use. And I look at this really quickly and say, OK, I'm going to put um, the 3 here and the 1 here. And that's how I would do it. Then again, I've been practicing this enough. You can probably do this too with a little bit of practice, but you know, not every student can do that off the top of their head. And believe me, I've been teaching thousands of students. I know not every student can do that off the top of their head. But if you want to check it, check it. Negative 1 times x, negative 1x, plus 2x times negative 3, negative 6x. Negative 1x plus negative 6x is negative 7x. So we say, well, that's not the same as that. Yes, it is. Quantity 2x minus 1 times quantity x minus 3. Two different ways to do it. Now, when we get to more uh, difficult problems that include factoring everywhere, I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to do this. And that's chapters ahead. Well, that's lessons ahead, I should say. Uh, I will probably just do this in my head. But if you practice enough, this enough and you do your homework and you stay with your teacher and what you're supposed to do, I promise you, your factoring skills really do get better. But that's the point. You have to practice it. And sometimes students choose not to practice it and think that it's just going to get better miraculously. It doesn't work like that. They, I want my skills to get good without trying. I'd like to be a millionaire without trying either, but it ain't going to happen. Try. Okay. Next one, 3n squared plus 14n subtract 5. So here's how I'm going to do it. Again, I'll do it like this. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. I've got to think of two numbers that multiply to be negative 15, but add to be 14n, or 14. And the only thing I can think of is, OK, 15 subtract 1 is 14. And 15 times negative 1 is negative 15. So that's what I'm going to do. So 14n, I'm going to rewrite as 15n minus 1n. And the reason why is because 15 times negative 1 is negative 15, but it adds up to be 14. Subtract 5. Now some of you are going to say, that's too much work. If you can do it in your head, do it in your head. That's perfectly fine. I don't mind. But if you can't, then you need some sort of system to base it on. You know, initially it's difficult, but you get used to it. You have to practice it, though. Okay, I want to factor into groups. So I'm going to take the first two and the last two. What number goes into 3 and 15? So 3. What goes into n squared and n? And n. 
I never want my first term to be negative. So first of all, I'm going to divide by negative 1. And that's all I can divide by. Now when I do that, 3 divided by 3 is 1. n squared divided by n to the first is n. Plus 15 divided by 3 is 5. n divided by n. But I have a 3n in front. Negative 1 divided by negative 1 is 1. And I have an n left over. Negative 5 divided by negative 1 is positive 5. Whatever you divide it by, put it out in front of the coordinate. What do both of these terms have in common that you can take out? And by the way, this is called grouping. And we don't even have to teach grouping now because we already have grouping here. Well, I can still teach grouping. Divide these out, and I've got 3n, subtract 1, bam, but what did I divide out? n plus 5. That's the answer when you factor it. Now, I'll show you how you can do it in your head really quickly. Um, I have to tell you though, beware, you might not be ready for it, you might be ready for it, who knows. So I'm going to factor this really quickly in my head. Two sets of parentheses. Last term is negative, so I know that one's a plus and one's a subtraction. And by the way, you always have to check to see if there's a GCF first. You always have to do that. It'll make your life a lot simpler. Um, what times what is 3n squared, 3n and 1n? What times what is negative 5? Uh, 5 and 1 in any order. I'm going to go ahead and put the 1 here and the 5 here. I'm so glad this actually happened. Check it. 1 times n is 1n plus 3n times negative 5 is negative 15n. That looks like an h. That's negative 14n. I wanted positive 14n. Before you become all flustered, if you got the same number except the opposite sign, all you do is change the signs. This was positive negative and it gave me negative 14. Negative positive will give me negative 1n plus 15n is 14n. A lot to absorb. One of the most difficult lessons for any student, actually, in any sort of algebra class. Don't really like factoring. A lot of students, the majority of students don't like it. If you just kind of chuck along through it, it's not as bad. You just, you got to go through the motions. That's the best advice I can really offer. Other than that, that's pretty much it for now. I'll see you soon. Have a great day. Goodbye.